All right, so last week what we did was we worked with normal distributions and we tried to find areas or probabilities. This week we're going to go backwards and given probabilities and areas, we're going to try to find values. Okay, so again, remember last week we used something called norm.s.dist and norm.dist in Excel and we would put in either a z-score in true or we would put in a, um, an x value, a mean, and a standard deviation in true and what Excel would give us is a probability or an area. Alright, so now what we want to do is we want to be given a probability and sometimes a percentile and we're going to be asked to find the random variable x. So maybe given a probability and working backwards uh, to get say like an IQ score or working backwards to get a height. Alright, so let's find the z-score that corresponds to a cumulative area of 0 0.3632. Okay, so the cumulative area uh, you guys need to know is the same thing as saying the area to the left. Alright, so and I'm going to, we're going to just work through Excel. All right, so obviously I've already got a few z-scores in here where I was playing. All right, so we want to find the z-score that corresponds to the cumulative area of 0 0.3632. So we're going to use norm.s.env, so env meaning inverse, so we're going backwards. So and our inputs for this function are just a z-score. Oh, sorry, as I say a z-score, a probability. Let's try that again. And I'm going to specify here it's a probability to the left. Okay, so sometimes we're going to have to do math to get the area to the left. So I'm going to say equals norm.s.env. Okay. And you can see all I'm asked for is the probability. So I type 0 0.3632. And I get my z-score of negative 0 0.35. All right, does it make sense that it's negative? It better make sense to you that it's negative because we're to the left of the mean, which is 0. So again, we're working with the standard normal distribution here. Our mean is 0. We can see by our graph here that z is to the left of the mean, the probability is less than 50%, so we're expecting a negative z-score. And it just so happens when we put in uh, 36.3632 into our norm.s.env function, we get a negative z-score of 0.35. Okay, what about finding the z-score that has 10.75% of the distribution's area to its right? All right, this is one of those where we're going to have to do some math. So here I'm given area to the right. All right, and all right, no pun intended, haha. <laughs> Uh, 0.1075. Okay, so I'm given the area to the right. So what do I need to do? I need to do 1 minus 0 0.1075. I'm going to need to do this math. I'm going to need to get the area to the left. All right, and I'll actually type it in here. All right, so I'm getting the area to the left, which we can see uh, by our graph there is uh, a little more than 89%, so 0.8925. Notice something I did um, silently so far and I didn't draw attention to, and that is that I changed the percent to a decimal. Even though in the problem I am given this percent of 10.75, notice I'm changing it to 0.1075. All right, now once I have, and I'm going to label this as area to left, once I have my area to the left, I can get my, my uh, z-score, so norm.s.n of uh, area to left, all right, not r, area, all right, and so now I can type my function in, I'm going to do equals norm dot s dot n alright and I'm going to use my probability that I just calculated 
and you can see that I get a z-score of 1.24. All right, so this z right here that has 0.1075 area above it, that also has 0.8925 area below it, this z-score is 1.24. Okay, let's work through another one. So here's one where we're going to be given a percentile. Find the z-score that corresponds to P5. Okay, so if we're given P5, P5 just means 5% below. Okay, so again, P5 means 5% below. If I were to give you P80, that means 80% below. All right, so here we have P5. So given area to the left is 0 0.05. All right, I'm just going to use my norm dot s dot n. All right, my area to the left is 0 0.05 or 5%. And I get a z-score of negative 1.645. All right, so hopefully you guys are going, wow, this really is getting easier. Excel is now my friend. I don't hate it quite as much. All right, so uh, we've, we've worked through norm.s.env, so we've gotten z-scores uh, using Excel. All right, now let's talk about going backwards, uh, transforming a z-score to an x-score. Okay, so remember we had our z-score formula of x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay, if we solve that for x, we're going to get our uh, formula here of x equals the mean plus z times the standard deviation. All right, so let's just play with this formula a little bit. All right, and I'll go ahead and, and type it in here. So we have x equals mean plus z times standard deviation. All right, a veterinarian records the weights of cats treated at a clinic. The weights are normally distributed with a mean of 9 pounds and a standard deviation of 2 pounds. All right, so I'm working over here in Excel, and I'm going to go ahead and tell myself that the mean is 9 pounds and the standard deviation is two pounds. All right, and we want to find the weights x corresponding to z-scores. So I have z-score of 1.96, negative 0 0.44, and zero. So these are my z-scores. Okay. And so we want to use our formula, all right, and solve for uh, poundage of, of the cats, all right? Do we say poundage? I don't even know. I'm not a cat person. I guess it's because my dog would eat cats if she could. All right, so what are we going to do here? All right, we want to solve for um, x, all right? So... Um, what are we going to do? We're going to say equals our mean 9 plus our z times our standard deviation. All right, so you can see here on the formula by the colors that again I'm doing equals the mean 9 plus the z score 1.96 times the standard deviation of 2. And I get an x of 12.92 pounds. Okay. I can do the same thing for a z-score of negative 0.44. So I say equals the mean plus the z-score times the standard deviation. And now I get a, weight, a cat weight of 8.12 pounds. All right, and let's do the same thing here. All right, now, what are we expecting for a z-score of zero? All right, well, we know that a z-score of zero, well, zero is the mean of the standard normal, uh, normal curve. So what we're expecting is to get the mean 
uh, for the cats of 9 pounds. All right, so we do equals our mean plus our z-score of 0 times the standard deviation, and indeed we get our mean of 9 pounds. All right, now let's work with a different function. Okay, do we have to always convert to z-scores, or do we have to always use, in other words, norm.s.m? Absolutely not. That's the beauty of working with Excel over having those tables. All right, folks, hopefully you're listening. Keep in mind, on the exam, you will not be allowed standard normal tables or TI calculators. You don't need them. You should work everything through Excel. All right, so... All right, what's our, what is our function in Excel going to be? It's going to be very similar to the dot s one above. We'll have norm dot n. We will need to put in our area to the left, comma, our mean, comma, our standard deviation. Okay, so scores for the California Peace Officer Standards and Training Test are normally distributed with a mean of 50, and a standard deviation of 10. All right, so I've got a mean of 50. I've got a standard deviation of 10. Okay, an agency will only hire applicants with scores in the top 10%. So I know the area to the right is 0 0.10. Okay, that's the top 10%, area to the right. What is the lowest score you can earn and still be eligible to be hired by the agency? All right, well, an exam in the top 10% is any score above the 90th percentile, as we can see by our, by our graph here. All right, so what do we want to do? We need the area to the left. Well, if the area to the right is 10%, it makes sense that the area to the left is going to be 0.9. All right, and we can use, I'm going to go down here to the next slide, all right, we can use Excel, so I'm going to say equals norm.n, oops, no wonder it didn't come up, I have a mistake, all right, and we can see Excel always tells us what the inputs need to be. We need probability, mean, and standard deviation. That probability has to be to the left, so I type 0 0.9, okay, I can I can type 50 for my mean and 10 for my standard deviation. And I get my test score, all right, of 62.8. All right, meaning, all right, the test takers have to score most likely a 63. We're assuming there's probably not decimals on this exam. They're going to have to score a 63 in order to pass. Can we use cell references in this formula? So I got norm.n. Sure, I can do point not. I can do, I can use a cell reference for the probability, a cell reference for the mean, and a cell reference for the standard deviation. And I should get the exact same answer I did before, which is the 62.8 test score. All right, 